there what's going on guys so recently i just released a clip about some cool and unknown features that you can find on the mercedes w204 now this is just an update of some of the other cool features that i've discovered so i hope you guys enjoy it so the c classes with the sport mode and the amg packaging when you go into sport mode what actually happens is your suspension gets stiffer and your car lowers in order to give you that sportier feel. Now, I believe that this is only for the AMG package models, so you have to have the AMG option added to your vehicle. And that way, when you go into sport mode, you will actually feel these differences. And it's actually quite amazing how it feels. Give it a shot and see how you feel. So another cool feature of the W204 is that you have a card holder in your glove box. I actually didn't realize what this was. However, I knew it did something. I just didn't know what it was. It actually has a card slot for two cards. However, you could probably stack two on the top and maybe get away with two on the bottom, but I only left one there. Also, this part here with the lines is actually a coin holder. And you can actually have a pen holder just like that that's pretty cool and another cool feature is you can enter engineering mode of your entertainment system all you have to do is hold hang up one and hash one two three four five six seven about seven seconds and from here you can control a lot of things like your color bar your head unit diagnosis you know, you can check your circuits, things like that, head unit information, GPS information, all sorts of stuff. So give it a try on your car. And from here, you can even activate or deactivate your rear camera. If you're just installing one, then you can control it from here. And also from here, you can control if you want your auxiliary on or off as you can see but we'll leave it on because i want my video auxiliary on that way your car will be able to read video through your auxiliary so that's pretty cool and there's a whole bunch of settings in here as well so you know maybe just give it a go and see what you can come up with as you can see there's so many this is the uh the menu for rear camera now mine isn't installed because i actually have an aftermarket camera however if you go the oem route and just route a rear camera to your entertainment system then you can turn it to on and it will just recognize every time you go into reverse and to turn it on and there we have it that's a lot of things that you can do with this engineering mode okay so i think that's pretty cool and as you could see right there and then another cool feature of the mercedes is that if you're listening to music and the car isn't running it has a feature where it will help you conserve battery by switching off the system as you could see there i was scrolling through the the um engineering mode and without me having to do anything it automatically just shut off the entertainment system in order to conserve battery as you can see the car is still running but it just switched off by itself so that's pretty cool also another cool feature is that if you actually go into convenience mode you can actually select an option called belt adjustment and you can either activate or deactivate it and what this does is when you go to put on your seat belt it will adjust for you the tension so i'll put on my seat belt and it will adjust there you go in the first video i showed you that you can use your gear stick and go to manual by simply going left and right and holding it will take you to back to d and holding it back will get you back to the lowest gear however the exact same thing can be done with your paddle shifters so we're in gear one right now so if i just hold up it will go back to D and if I hold down it will take me to the lowest gear possible for overtaking there we go so that's pretty cool also okay so those of us who have the full multimedia system 
you have a nice little feature. Along with the speed dependent volume increase, an internal microphone also monitors the cabin noise and will automatically increase the volume to compensate. For a bit of fun, you can try this at home with a vacuum cleaner. And you'll actually see that the volume increases. This also happens for the voice recognition. If the microphone detects a high white noise level, it actually tries to reduce the noise by lowering the air conditioner to minimum levels until the voice command have finished. Okay, so if you turn your key to the first position and then you press the core answer button and OK, like so, you access the sub menu. And so from here, you can see the vehicle data, such as the battery, and the VIN number, engine number, also vehicle information, and all sorts of other stuff, the version, software version, etc. Also, from here, there's a roller test function and a Sys Plus, which will allow you to reset your service indicator. So that's pretty cool also. You don't actually need to go to the shop in order to reset your service data, etc. And to exit, you just press back and back. Also, with cruise control, there's quite a few cool features, which are if you just push up to the first pressure point, you can actually go up in increments of one kilometer per hour. And if you push it all the way up past the pressure point beyond it like that, then you could go up in increments of 10 kilometers per hour. So that's pretty handy. And also, if you're, say, going 70 kilometers per hour and you have it set to 70 and then you step on the accelerator to overtake a car, once you're actually done overtaking, it will actually go back to 70 kilometers an hour. Now, I'm, I'm aware that this is how most cruise controls work. However, some of us are actually visual and some of us actually don't have the manual in order to discover these features. So... I just wanted to mention it also. Okay, so leaving your headlights in auto mode, this will actually allow a home light function, which is leaving the parking and fog lights lit when you actually arm and disarm your car when it's dark, therefore giving you that pathway of light. Okay, and another really cool feature with the Mercedes, when you go into reverse, your side mirrors get lighter. So I'm in reverse now and watch the side mirror. As you can see, it gets lighter. And then once you go back to drive, it will automatically dim. There you go. Did you see that? Now I'll go back into reverse and watch it gets lighter. Right there, it's beginning to fade. There you have it. And to go back to park, just to show you again that it gets darker. There you go. You see how it just gets that tint again? Now that's actually really cool because I know how annoying it is sometimes when you go, you're in reverse and because you have the auto dim feature, you can barely see anything. So that's actually really cool. Okay, so for the first video, I showed you how you, when you depress the brake pedal, you have a function called hill assist where the car will roll back when you're on an incline until you accelerate. However, the same function also applies to downhill. So how this works is when the vehicle recognizes the gradient, it will actually provide assistance by downshifting a gear to provide more control and power to the wheels. So therefore you actually have more control as you're going down a decline. Also, did you know that you can actually reset your throttle control unit, which is your TCU. And how you do this is, you have to get your key, close all the doors, okay? And then you put it in the second position, okay? And from here, you depress the pedal all the way and hold it for five seconds. And then you turn your key to off. So that's about three, four, five seconds, and then you turn your key off without removing it and then you release your foot from the pedal and then without doing anything 
you just have to sit in the car for about two to three minutes. Some even say five minutes. You just have to try it and give it a go and see what happens. And then after about two to five minutes, you'll actually see that the car will actually relearn your driving style. So that's pretty cool. If you just bought the car from somebody else secondhand and you don't like their driving style or the car doesn't feel like it responds to your driving style. Therefore, you can do this procedure and reset your TCU and let the car relearn your driving style. For the newer versions of the W204, so I believe this is from 2011 and above, once you close the boot, there's a light that stays on or a release button that stays on for 60 minutes once you actually close the boot and it's actually an emergency release button so that's in case anybody actually gets locked in the trunk but I guess you won't be locking anybody in the trunk <laughs> also the C-Class has a pre-safe system which will automatically close all the windows and doors and the sunroof then move the seats, the headrest and the steering wheel to a more protective position. All this is done within milliseconds. As soon as the car senses that the, an accident is in, imminent, this is the second stage of the pre-safe. First stage is the passive preemptive measures like ESP, etc. The third stage is post-accident, which automatically shuts down the engine, cuts off fuel supply, automatically turning on the hazard lights, lowering the window slightly and unlocking all the doors. So that's pretty cool to have that pre-safety system. So normally when you lock the car and unlock the car, all four doors and the fuel cap will unlock. However, if you hold the lock and the unlock button for about seven seconds and then you begin to see a little red dot that flashes right here on the key fob, then you can change how the car locks and unlocks. For instance, at the moment I've changed it to the other setting where only the driver side will unlock and the petrol cap will unlock. So for instance, here I go, I unlock the car and as you can see, only the driver side is unlocked. And then if I press it again, then the other three doors will unlock. And when you lock it, it will again lock everything, as you can see. And in order to change it back, all you have to do is hold lock and unlock again for about 10 seconds. And when you see that little red light flashes in this little corner, then you will know the setting has activated. And that's it. So that's pretty cool if you're worried about safety. And you only want your door to unlock rather than all four doors. Also, did you know that when you lock and unlock the car, it locks the petrol cap as well. So I'll lock the car now. And as you can see, there's a little device in here that just moves. Let me give you some light. There we go. And now I'll unlock it. And there you have it. However, that is a pro and con in itself because if you've got it out the car and you want to lock the car as you're filling petrol, you actually have to lock the car, unlock the car again in order to close your fuel cap. Which is kind of silly, but as long as you know what you're doing, it's not a problem. So we'll unlock it now. And now we can close the petrol cap. Okay, so these vent holes you see with the rear tail lights, these begin behind the rear wheels, allowing hot air to escape away from the rotors and reduce both brake dust builder and overall drag coefficient, aerodynamic friction. So that's pretty cool also. Okay, so if you have the by Xenon headlights with the intelligent lighting system the lights actually work in a certain way where they'll self level when you turn on the car and also if you're driving down a highway and as you turn around corners the intelligent lighting system will light up the road and move to your steering wheel so as you turn left the lights will actually angle left and light the side of the road up in order for you to see the oncoming road path clearly. Now that's really cool. However, it isn't necessary for all cars, but it's just really cool that Mercedes have added this feature into their by Xenon lights. Now, this is only for the by Xenon lights where you have the projector style light, like so. Also, I've also noticed that if I'm high beaming and 
an oncoming car begins to approach me, the high beam will dip so that I don't actually blind oncoming traffic. Or even if I'm really close to a, a car and I flash my high beam, if the car is really close to me, it will actually reflect off the lens and dip my high beam as well. So that's actually really cool so that you don't blind oncoming traffic or the traffic in front of you. Now, I may be wrong about this, but this is just a feature that I've actually noticed. Also, so another cool feature is when you unlock the car and then you don't touch any of the doors or you don't open any other doors and then you begin to walk away and forget to lock the car again, the car will actually unlock by itself in about 30 seconds. So as of this moment, it's been about 20 seconds. And just to show you guys live that I haven't opened any doors, I haven't touched anything and the car will lock by itself. So this is actually a really cool feature if you forget to lock your car again, if you've unlocked it for whatever reason. And there you go. The car has just locked itself again. Another cool safety feature is when the sun slash pano roof is left open on an extremely hot day, the car will automatically close it to tilt position after 30 minutes. If the car is also equipped with a rain sensor, the car will again close to tilt position. The roof, as soon as the sensors detect rain, both of these are only activated if the car is left in park with the ignition off. So as you can see, it's tilting and I'm not even touching anything. So that's how that works. And it was exactly half an hour. Well, there you have it guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope that it helps you find out some cool and unknown features that you never even knew about. But like I said, remember that a lot of these are actually in the manual. So if you have your manual, take a really good read of it and you're going to, you're going to discover some cool and unknown features that you never knew existed. And if you like this video and you thought it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And remember, please like, share and subscribe. And remember to hit that notifications bell so you'll be notified every time I release another video. Thanks again for watching. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs and I'll see you guys in the next video.